welcome to you. It's so good to know you're there. Today on Art and Leisure, I have a popular for you. Let's start by inviting a poet who's in search of a real woman. What does he mean by that? <laughs> My name is Chioma Okpara. I want to know if I'm a real woman. I seek a woman, a real woman, not a walking shadow, a life-size cardboard cutout or a rag doll with healthy looking florid cheeks, whose use is kept with chemicals and spices, whose height is veiled with platforms and stilettos, whose slim figure betrays a firm girdle, whose great body is a good brushes, well patterned and printed, whose shiny hair is pure frog or dyed wool, whose toast well toasted and tinted, whose silky skin is an artistic decor, well roasted and treated, whose glossy face is processed skin, well waxed and painted, whose clean teeth are silver or gold, whose broad shoulders and, and great hips are mere form, whose full breasts are nothing but falses or big rubber balls, whose long nails are borrowed from the dead, a sheer slide on wild hawks, whose sweet smell betrays some costly scent, whose elegant walk is stolen from, from poor cats, whose geography is an open book to all men, whose holiest shrines are a feast for, love, for all eyes, whose holy of holies is pro public property. I seek a woman, a real woman, not a mere piece of gorgeous flesh, Whose great matter is mere because whose main source of power is a small pot of treasure buried in the shallow grave between her charming legs? I seek a woman, a real woman, not a pretty bimbo, a synthetic beauty, some, some beauty queen with a plastic charm, a mere work of art, some nightingale made for popping jays. I seek a woman, a real woman. Welcome back. That was deep. I hope you found it thought-provoking. Now to work at the musical. If you saw the stage play, I'm sure you'd have good testimonies to share. Art and Leisure saw the play at rehearsal stage, went with the crew to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and yes, truly sat for two hours to watch a creation by a Nigerian for Nigerians. Take a look. <laughs> This performance was to announce that Waka the Musical was about to hit the stage soon. Then some members of the cast and crew visited the Nigerian Stock Exchange and rang the closing bell. In five days, the 70-man cast and crew performed 12 times. Waka the Musical, a two-hour stage play, looked at different facets of the nation. Patriotic citizenry, should you choose to elect the opposing party, a celebration of our democracy will surely metamorphosize into a, 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 a depreciable apotheosis of, of an emerging plutocrat. <laughs> Yeah. If you vote me as governor of 
this state. I will ensure free education. Yes. Free hospital care. Yes. Free water. Free electricity. Free life. In fact, free everything. Yes, and the free everything starts now. I have one free bag of rice for everybody present. After all, we must first feed our stomach with that protein. The struggles and challenges young people face at home and abroad were also brought to the fore. Cassandra, baby! Now, where are you now? I've been there African time in this London again. Rex! Eh? Yes, can I help you? Oh, ah. oh, the Cassandra sent you to pick me up from the airport. <laughs> Rex, I'm Cassandra. Eh? <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, but that has to be the joke of the century. I mean, you can't be serious, right? I mean, you, you, you cannot be serious. Right? I'm deadly serious. My African Shongo. Welcome to London. <laughs> I can't wait to introduce you to all of my friends. No, 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 no. <laughs> you look different. You're not white. Oh! Parental guidance was not applied here because even children played major roles. It's good to get our children exposed to stage performances uh, because it gives them confidence. And it's also good to know that we have so much talent in the younger generation. For the kids, I think it's important that we also uh, try to teach our children about our culture. Waka the musical was shown during the Christmas and New Year holidays and no one wanted to be told about it. This is my second um, viewing. That gives you, I think in a way, that tells you all. Um, I came with my family first time, loved it so much. I brought all my staff this time to see it. Very, very vibrant, very colorful, music was good, and the whole story was just spot on. I think it's a fantastic leap in whatever we do artistically in this country. It's fantastic. It was an amazing show from beginning to end. Very creative, very energetic, full of energy. It was really good. I enjoyed it. Waka the Musical was written by Tunde Bawalola. The script was edited by the University of Illinois. Bolanle Austin Peters directed it. I'm very happy. It's all worked out well. Um, you know, you can work hard, but it is the grace of God that, um, that brings success. So I'm grateful to God that everything has worked out really well. What's next? At the moment, since we have Waka and we have Saru, I can tell you that this year you'll probably see Saro or Waka over the Easter break and um, at December we'll do the same thing. Nice to have you back. We've got it all in this country. You play your part, I play my part. Then we'll see the Nigeria of our dreams. All right, it is time for us to see a unique 
exhibition. I don't want to say much. Just stick around. Yes, it is a clock exhibition. Different shapes that will suit different walls. But it's all about telling what time it is. Busola Akinubi, the organizer of this event, says she started collecting clocks five years ago. The love really started from me going for an exhibition abroad and I saw some clocks, and especially this, um, the gear clocks. And I, and I said a little prayer that one day I'd love to have the clocks in my store. And gradually I started collecting clocks. And before I knew it, I had over 200 all manner of clocks. She goes far in search of unique timepieces. They're basically from the US, from um, UK, Italy, and Holland. Everyone's taste, career, and personality have been taken into consideration here. We have all manner of clocks. We have symbol clocks, we have antique clocks, we have gear clocks, we have kitchen clocks, we have mirror clocks. We have all manner. We have a lot of gear clocks. They are functional as well as ornamental. This is a gear clock. It's called the gear with month and date. It's an hour clock. Here now, it's, this is 12 o'clock. This is 12.15, 12.30, 12.45 and 1 o'clock. So between here and here, it's, this is between here and here. So it's more like 12.16, 12.20. It's, it not only tells you the time, it also adds beauty and style to any home or office. So it's, it's more of an artwork. We call this the um, square diamante clock. This is a clock about clock. It would be good for the Hollywood or the Nollywood directors and producers. This is another gear clock. We call it the two-in-one gear clock. It's the same method as that. This is a leaf with round diamante. This is another kind of gear clock. This is a rectangle diamante. This is a good kitchen clock. We have different types of clocks that will fit into any, whatever home you have, your kitchen, your office, your children's room, you have different clocks that will fit into it. They are functional as well as ornamental. Busola is a computer science graduate, but she sees herself as an artist now because she's good with her hands. These are her creations made from discarded materials. Those are made from what you would call scraps. What ordinarily you would throw away. Like the old telephone, the old rotary clock, a lot of people have thrown theirs away. But just happened to find from, like my dad still kept his, the motherboards, the old fans, the um, the poof, the house of mat and all that. So I just gather things and turn them into clocks. Because I, I, I wanted something more inspiring. I told myself anybody can just pick a clock and sell. So there's really no big deal about selling clocks because anybody can do that. But I wanted to do something different, like a step ahead. You know, so I thought of making my own brand. That's a scrabble. This is another motherboard. That's a grab of food, that, and the bottles. What started as a hobby now commands the attention of people from all walks of life. They are astounding. I'm amazed. I'm surprised about the creativity that I can see on display. They are awesome. They are incredible. They are. Uh, clocks, you know, that deposit us all facets of life. Very exhilarating. I uh, never thought that there are so much what we call time in different forms, quite interesting shapes, and uh, would love to have all of them in my house as a museum. I want to offer my congratulations, certainly about this very creative, innovative, ingenious, really, I have to use the word, joyous exhibition. But I also want to say, as the director of the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art in Washington, D.C., it is a privilege to once again be in this country, to be in Nigeria, a place where those of us in the art world know there is so much in the traditional 
artistic expression and so much in contemporary African art. How affordable are these art pieces, one may ask? Some of them come expensive because, you know, unusual things are not cheap. So some of the clocks are ex expensive. Well, expensive is really relative, but they're unusual. Busola Akinubi makes bold to reiterate that her collection suits artists. I hope you're having a great time. Yes, I promise to you a purple Bayoso State has only eight local government areas, small state, <laughs> but very rich in oil and culture. Enjoy this. <laughs> Welcome back. Our last report is a tribute to an art icon whose contributions to the growth of visual arts in Nigeria are many. Professor Ucho Keke was one of the key members of the Zaria Art Society. He did illustration on Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. He passed on on the 5th of January, but we're here to celebrate our legend. He was born Christopher Uche Funo Keke 82 years ago. He demonstrated an avid interest in drawing and painting whilst in secondary school. He had already exhibited his artwork 
to a large audience. Before gaining admission to study fine arts at the Nigerian College of Arts, Science and Technology, now known as Amadubelo University, he exhibited art pieces done in the medium of taxidermy in Jaws. He also had a solo exhibition of drawings and paintings in Jaws and Kaduna. As an undergraduate, Ucho KK, together with Yusuf Grillo, Bruce Onobrakweya, Dimas Moko, and others, inaugurated the Zaria Art Society. His contribution to the Zaria Art Society is a great one. I always say that he is a philosopher king. He propounded the philosophy that um, uh, guided the um, Zaria Art Society that became a revolution, an artistic revolution in the country. He was a lecturer for many years. As the head of Fine Arts Department of the University of Nigeria in Suka, he introduced Uli Art tradition into the school's programs. Ucho Okeke has left a mark in Nigerian history in two ways. One, he rallied around his colleagues to fight against the syndrome of uh, colonizing the thought of the, the creative thought of Nigerian artists. Uche Okeke founded the Uli School of Art. In 1973, he designed the first course program of the Department of Fine and Applied Arts, Institute of Management and Technology in Ugu. He was a visiting professor to many universities. He held solo exhibitions and also participated in group exhibitions in Nigeria and overseas. He did many commissioned jobs, among which is the illustration on Chino Achebe's Things Fall Apart. His works are on choice places in different parts of the world. In 2012, Chief Rashid Badamosi, an art collector, organized a lecture in Fiesta in his honor. I am a lover of a movement in fine art, the movement invented by those referred to as the Zarianists. The distinguishing issue about Ucho Keke uh, was that he infused the philosophical underpinning of Zarianism. I had the pleasure of featuring him at the annual uh, Grillo Pavilion show, which I'd done for about six years. And we drew great pleasure from amassing loads of his works from his base at uh, 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 Nemo in Anambra State. About three months to his 83rd birthday, Ucho KK passed on in his hometown, Nemo in Anambra State. Although we know that Uche had been ill for some time now, the news about his death shocks everyone, shocks the people in academia, shocks artists, both young and, uh, and, and older ones. To me, the death of Uche is the loss of a brother and friend. He will be missed by all art lovers. Asele Institute at Nemo is an uncompleted project of Professor Uche Okeke. I think if we love him, we should finish Nemo. The museum Uche Okeke started in Nemo. Uh, whether the state government or the federal government, we should do it. I think his soul will rest more in heaven if that museum is done. There, his writings and books are stored. There, his artworks are stored. There, there is space for internship where young people and um, other people from other parts of the country can come and learn and become great. So if the institute, if the institute 
is developed, developed, it will be a worthy memorial. Welcome back. Professor and Mrs. Chokeke were married for almost 50 years. Their children are doing well. It was an all-round success. The art community will miss him greatly, but will continue to celebrate him. Thank you so much for being a part of today's program. In case you missed any part of it, not to worry, you can watch it online. Just go to www.artandleisure.com.ng. My name is Chioma Opara. Same time, same station. Next week, God willing, there will be another edition. Until then, love yourself, love Nigeria. Thank you.